Hello board gamers and welcome back to Not Board Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now today's video is a very special video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing video of intergalactic proportions. Today is an unboxing of the Kickstarter package of On Mars by Eagle Griffin Games designed by Vital Lacerda. Now, I know this is a huge, huge game for a lot of people. This is a massive, massive Kickstarter last year uh, that has just started shipping to a lot of people. Um, it, very nice people at Eagle Griffin Games sent me a review copy. So I thought, because I've got the review copy, what a great way to show all you people who'll be looking to buy this at retail exactly what you get in the box. Now, I'm slightly ashamed to say that this is my first Lacerda game, um, but I'm really looking forward to playing it. Really, really looking forward to pay playing it. The images I've seen online look absolutely fantastic. Really my kind of game. And also, as an added bonus, the rules, uh, the rule book has been done by Paul Grogan of Gaming Rules. Now, if you know Paul Grogan and you know Gaming Rules, then you know that it's one of the best ways to learn how to play a game. And he's also done a video, which I'll put a link up to shortly, uh, about how you can watch the uh, rules and how to play video and how to play the game. So, without much further ado, let's have a look at what you get inside the Kickstarter box for On Mars by Eagle Griffin Games, designed by Vital Lacerda. Okay, so let's have a look inside On Mars by Vital Lacerda, Eagle Griffin Games, with the beautiful artwork by Ian O'Toole. Now, the first thing you will notice about the box is its size. It's quite a big box. For example, here's Scythe, and as you can see, it's kind of longer than the Scythe box by about an inch or so on the end. And if we look at the top end, you can see that it's slightly wider than the Scythe box as well. So that gives you some kind of indication of scale on the box, on the box size. Uh, now the first thing I'll mention is Eagle Griffin Games did let me know it was a damaged box before they sent it to me, and that's absolutely fine. I've obviously got no problem with that whatsoever. However, look at this wonderful, wonderful artwork by Ian O'Toole. I mean, that really speaks of Mars to you, doesn't it? And of course, I've also got the, um, the expansion board as well, the upgrade pack as well, which will open in a while. So let's have a look at the back of the beautiful box. And there we go, on Mars, the next frontier of human endeavor. The first settlers arrived on Mars in the year 2037, so what, 17 years away from now? Uh, in the decades after uh, the Mars base camp was established, private exploration companies started working towards the creation of a self-sustaining colony. And here we go, we've got all the credits down there. Uh, it's 80 to 150 minutes for a game, one to four players, of course, we'll be looking at it from the solo perspective. And there we go, ages 14 plus. And right on the back, you can see, got a little QR code for Paul Grogan's Gaming Rules. Look, when you do learn to play this game, uh, you know, I will be doing a review on the game, but not necessarily, definitely not how to play it in any way near as in-depth as Paul Grogan does on Gaming Rules. So I would, before you buy the game as well, well, while you're waiting for the game to arrive, check out Paul's Gaming Rules website, have a look at the On Mars How to Play. That's going to teach you a lot of how to play this game. So, here's the potentially scary bit, the bit that we kind of almost don't like sometimes, it's the knife and the shrink wrap, and there we go. Just cutting through the shrink wrap enough, so I can get a start on that, let's put the knife out of the way. Nobody ever likes having knives near their board games. So let's, oh, sorry if I wobbled the camera ever so slightly. The box art is beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. I know it's, I say it's got that bit of damage on there, but I was made aware of that by Eagle Griffin Games. Okay, so let's have a look. There's a little flyer, promotional flyer, about some of the other games there. Fleet Dice is definitely on my list of games that I want, as is, uh, of course, Escape Plan and some other Vital Lacerda games as well. I will make a confession. This is my first Lacerda game, so I'm doubly, triply excited by this. Okay, first thing we're going to get to is a reference book. So this will be the player aid, because uh, I should imagine like a game like this has a lot of iconography. And there we go, you've got some kind of five, six, seven, eight pages of reference to help you when you're playing the game. Next, we have the rule book. There we go. And the rule book itself is some 24 pages long, of course. It's got variations on how to play the game. So there's the solo game at the back there with the solo goals. There's a two-player game. There's a first colonist variant. 
And then the game components, the layout of the beautiful board, and what you have to do to set up, go through the various phases, and play the game. I really enjoyed reading uh, the prospect of reading this. I thoroughly enjoy reading a rule book. So I will read this in conjunction with watching Paul's gaming rules video. Uh, and I will be playing this at some point this weekend, the solo game. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that rule book. <laughs> Looks like a good rule book. I do like a good rule book. Okay, we have some something to punch out there. Don't know what that is yet. We have. Okay, some reference cards, some player aids there. So a nice thick card for those aids. There, we also have a little board here, which is different to the little board that comes in the in the upgrade pack. We don't know what that does yet. Obviously, you're gonna lay some cards on there or something. We've got some small baggies. Oh, let's come back to the board in a minute, I think, yeah, because I know from looking at pictures it's a thing of beauty. Now, we've got some seriously thick punch-out cards. I mean, look at the thickness on those. They are seriously thick. I do like punching a game out. I really, it's one of my pleasures. So we have one, two, three really thick and meaty punch outs there of card components. What else have we got here? So these look, oh, uh, okay. So kind of um, dual layer boards. So these will be the player boards. You've got dual layers on there so that your pieces won't skitter around in there. I know that's on some games, Maracaibo, I'm talking to you. Uh, you have a real issue with pieces kind of skittering around and obviously in, in terraforming Mars as well. Uh, okay, we've got some little vital asserter signature on the back there, which is just fantastic. And that's on the back of all the player, player cards. Uh, we have a bit of packing there. Have <laughs> a look at this. This looks ace. And of course, what they've done is given it a nice red kind of cover on there. So we're going to take that cover off. That's the Mars theme. And there we have some of the components and the trays inside. And it looks like there's a place for everything, and everything will have its place, which is which is just great because when I when I get a big sprawling game like this, I want to have the ability to put it away and have everything go in the box. Certain games that doesn't happen. We talk about Maracaibo again. One of my disappointments with Maracaibo is it's just an empty box, so you, you, there's no insert, no way to put everything. And there's lots of little pieces there. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these Meeple-esque things. I'll not open all the packets, of course, but uh, let's just have a look here. So what do we have? We have a number of rocket ships. Look at that. There we go. Yeah. Let's just see if I can focus on that. No, it's not focusing. Yeah, we have a number of rocket ships. We have some robot meeples to skitter around, uh, kind of... The, uh, the scutters from Red Dwarf, what do we have here? We have a rover type meeple, so that'll bounce around the planet's surface. We have our astronaut meeple as well. Uh, and yeah, and then there's just variations on the same meeples in that meeple pack. And there are a number of those, obviously, there are different colours of those. So for the various players that you can have in the game. What else do we have? We have... Oh. These things here, absolutely no idea what these are, but let's have a look. Wow, okay. That is something. Uh, we have another rocket marker and some various wooden, really high quality wooden tokens. And then what do we have? Ah, Ace. We have some little blue worker meeple type peoples. Worker people meeples. Look at those. They look so cute, and I'm sure they will have a, a, a really significant purpose in the game. What that is at this stage, I do not know. We have purple meeple peoples. We have yellow meeple peoples. We have more of... Oh, we have person peoples. So we have some. Rather than spacemen meeple peoples, we have people meeple peoples. So, <laughs> and they look like they've got kind of resources on there, maybe obviously agriculture and, I don't know, wind, uh, water, uh, something like that. And what else do we have? Uh, yeah, this looks like something out of Breaking Bad, doesn't it? No, it's not. It's obviously some kind of crystals that you use for something in the game, part of your resources that you're going to um, uh, that you're either collect or spend uh, throughout the game. We have... 
big and chunky tokens. Look at these things, yeah? So I've seen these in, uh, in, in the videos and these are really, really weighty and meaty. Look at those. They're quite, uh, quite significant tokens, those. Yeah, very nice and great quality. And I'm really impressed by the amount of quality that is in this box from Eagle Russian Games. I know it's a little bit expensive when it comes out, but the quality is absolutely first rate. I mean, look at that. You got what well, these little kind of outposts or something like that. Really chunky meeples with nice print on there. Going to look forward tremendously to getting a lot of this to the board. We have some yellow ones of the same things. And we have, ooh, different ones here. Let me have a look. So these are, these again look like some kind of outpost, look like a satellite dish on there, as you can see, uh, against the building and some discs with some iconography on there. What that is, I do not know. So again, more to be explored. Don't worry, I know it looks like it's going in haphazardly, but I will spend some time kind of putting all this together nicely at some point. Yeah, and that's it, and the more player, player packs there. So in reality, for what is a, a kind of a big game, I you know, I think the amount of moving parts in there, because a lot of these are duplicated for a number of players, I think, um, yeah, I think that's a, a, not an overtly stupid amount in there. So I'm going to look forward to finding a way to put all this back together in the box itself. However, however, obviously, and there we go, we've got some lovely trays that you can move things around on. I think that's an exceptional storage solution for Needle Griffin Games. I think a game like this, you've seen the artwork, it looks fantastic. It screams absolute quality. And therefore, what they've done in the box, in the contents, in the trays, is absolutely kind of layer that quality all the way through. I'm so looking forward to playing this. So what we've got here, we have some cards and I don't know what these cards are for. This kind of three cards of a bald bloke there, uh, and it's the eagle. Oh, it's escape. Oh, <laughs> these are for escape plan. Okay, so I haven't got escape plan, but these are some replacement solo deck cards for escape plan. So if you have escape plan and you're a solo player and you want some kind of replacement cards for the solo deck, buy on Mars and you'll get them for free in that. And we have some cards here. So we have. See, biochemist, the R&D engineer, a hydrologist, great artwork, the geochemist, systems engineer, geologist, and various other bits as well. And again, the artwork is just fantastic. It's Eno Tool artwork. You're not going to expect anything less than absolutely wonderful from Mr. O'Toole. And then we have some further cards here. I don't know what these do at all, but these are a number of cards that you will use throughout it, so I'll tell you what you do. We have an Imperial Mine, we have a Bio Lab, a Radar, a Builder Drone, Research Lab, and lots and lots of cards there. Again, absolutely no idea what they do at this stage. So that is what's in the box. Let's just put the main board out now, because I think this, from what I've seen on all the pictures, is just a thing that is to be beholden. Look at that. First of all, on the back, you get this wonderful skyscape of Mars. You have the space station over there, signature of Vital Asserta on the back. Again, just pure quality. Just going that little bit extra on this, I think just makes a big difference. You know, it's not a cheap game to buy, and I think that that makes a big difference for people that are investing money and time in this game. And then we have, the amazing looking, let me just square that up, the amazing looking board. I mean, look at this thing. This is just fantastic. I have no idea what any of these icons do at this stage. Literally, when I finish this, I'm going to put on Paul Grogan's Gaming Rules video. I keep mentioning it. Make sure you watch it uh, to start to learn how to play the game and then go through the rule book once wife, kids, family, dog is all sorted basically. So I've got some time this evening to have a look at that. But that is a nice thick board with lots of great kind of artwork on there. Lots of places to put things which will go where? I'm sure you imagine A will go there and maybe B will go there. There we go. I've just completed my first two moves. No, I haven't. Um, that's going to create a wonderful experience. It's almost like looking at a heads up display on something. 
So really looking forward to that. So that's the main board, all right? Let's have a look in this expansion pack that comes. I think this was a Kickstarter exclusive. So let's have a quick look in here. And you can already tell the quality, the thickness of the board, the quality is absolutely carrying through. So let's just get this wrap off, move the knife out of the way. Let's have a look here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to come across is, again, just some beautiful artwork on there about the upgrade pack. And on the back of it, the upgrade pack rules. It's a mini private goals expansion, blueprint board, new earth contracts, complex, complex, <laughs> complex control contracts, and blueprint contracts. So this will go adjacent to the main board itself. So let's have a quick look at that. Just bear with me. Oops, sorry, not the camera. So yeah, this will go on, I think, on one side of the board, and that's where you'll put the various cards. And in these cards we have, these are the, uh, yeah, the Mini Private Goals expansion. So what is that? Private Goals, shuffle these cards and give one at random to each player. Uh, along with their three normal start, uh, their normal three starting private goals. Each player now begins the game with four private goal cards in total. As per the normal rules, you can still only complete one of these goals during the game. Okay, complete the goal by having tech tiles on all the highlighted spaces in your lab. I don't know what that means. So that's those, and there we are. Some more of the smaller cards as uh, the square cards as well. Let me just move that to one side. Let me just get some of this back in the picture because I think that what we have here is potentially one of the most amazing looking games that I've seen in a long, long time. This game just screams so much quality, so much thought gone into I'm sh about the design of the game, about the look of the game and how it stands out from other games. Um, you know, I'm sure from what I've seen about all the gameplay, it plays fantastically well. Uh, I will be doing a solo review in the next couple of weeks on this. Obviously, I need to play it, really get to grips with how the game plays. But I think that is a beautiful, beautiful looking game. So we've seen the game being unboxed. Now let's have a look at what the game looks like. When you lay it out and this is a beast of a table hog i mean look at all this wondrousness that's here <laughs> there is so much to go out with this game everything just looks so beautiful look at it i have literally no clue what i am doing my next port of call is obviously going to be, just to straighten that up, it's going to be the rule book and Paul Grogan's gaming rules video before I even make a move on this. But this is set up for the solo player. You can see the solo deck just there. I've got Lacerda bot, it's going to be in green, and I'm going to be in yellow. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm so looking forward to this. That is a beautiful, beautiful looking game. Look at it all. Okay. Let's have a look what it looks like when you've packed it all away. So, we've seen the game unboxed. We've seen the game laid out on the table. Let me show you what a beauty it is when you get to pack it all away. This is potentially one of the best packaged games I think I've ever come across because when I said there's a place for everything and everything in its place it makes it a joy to pack away, breeze to set up ish, uh, but also just the fact that it's so easy things aren't skittering around the box. So as you can see I've got everything in here now including the Kickstarter expansion so you take the lid off and there's the on Mars leaflet, there's the player board, there's the manuals, there's the other boards that are associated with it and of course the individual player boards, player aids, and you see how neat all that was as well. And then just under here, let me show you this. This is everything put away, 
everything has a place. And even if you lift up some of these tiles here, the space is in there for even more tiles to go under. And of course we have these hex tiles as well, which all have their space and under there the various tokens. And that gets to keep there with the cards. Look, I'm utterly blown away by the, um, by the production quality here. Not only has a lot of thought gone into the game itself, but then what they've done is actually put a lot of thought into how you put this game away. Because, you know, people are spending a not insignificant amount of money on a game like this. And when you, when you spend money like that, you, it, it wants to be something you actually treasure. And the fact that they've given all this thought, how you actually store the game and put the game away, it's just out of this world. Evil Griffin, Vital Asserta, Randall Lloyd, you guys on, on Mars have done, at this stage without playing the game, an absolutely first-rate job. Okay, so that's a lot of really high quality content that you get inside the box. Now, as you can see, the game is set out. In fact, this is my second solo game of On Mars in the last two days. And I'm really, really gonna spend a lot of time playing this, understanding the nuances of the game so I can put a review up of the solo experience on the Knotboard Gaming YouTube channel at some point, hopefully in the next two weeks. All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for watching Knotboard Gaming. My name's Mark, I've been your host. Uh, do remember that you can like and subscribe to the channel. You can check out our other videos. And if you've got nobody else to play with, there's nothing wrong with playing with yourselves.